Now let's go to an issue that has been trending since yesterday. The Electoral Commission has defended its decision to change the controversial logo introduced by former boss Charlotte Say, insisting reverting to the old logo which has Ghana's coat of arms won't break the bank. But before we get into all that, let's watch this old clip. We did not open up invitations for people to send logos in because as we explained, the logo has to represent where we're going to as a brand and as an institution. So it's not just about um, putting colors together. It had to represent something. We, are, we were also benchmarking internationally. We did look at logos of other electoral commissions. And it's important that we work very closely with other electoral commissions. They visit us, we look at their strategic plans, we exchange um, information, we exchange, um, we study, study visits are always going on. So there is a process. A logo is not just an artistic competition. It has to stand for something. We went through a process, and no, my husband did not design it. He's not a graphic artist. We went through a process, and I'm not even the only one married to a graphic artist, by the way. <laughs> we went through a process we, um, in terms of developing the brand and what we wanted the brand to stand for. We engaged internally, we made, we made inquiries, we had people bring, we selected as a commission, and that's why I said we selected it and we like it. If the Turkish what institute educational institute they we plagiarize their logo that is the okay, claim then they certainly have rights under the law um, we don't feel we've plagiarized their logos and if you look internationally there are many logos that look but like have you seen that logo by the way I have I don't think it looks like mine mm. I like mine better so we looked at we like it we are comfortable as a commission that it represents the values and the brand we want and the image we want to portray and it supports our strategic direction. That was former EC boss Charlotte Say outdooring that logo that created a lot of controversy. However, from today, letterheads received from the Electoral Commission will bear the original Eagles and Coat of Arms logo. An internal memo by Chairperson John Mensah copied to Deputy Chairpersons indicated that from December 4, 2018, the original logo of the Electoral Commission will bear the coat of arms that has a ballot box showing the hand casting its vote, and that has been restored. Deputy Commissioner Dr. Bosman Asari joins us live. Good morning, sir. Thanks for your time. Can you tell us what went into the decision to change the EC's logo? Uh, good morning logo? to you and good morning to your viewers. I think, I think to, to a large extent, uh, a lot of things went into it. You know, new commissioners were appointed on August 1st. And as soon as we assumed office, uh, we, we decided to look at uh, the policy direction of the Electoral Commission as an organization. And one of the discussions we had had to do with the logo of the commission. And members of the commission took a unanimous decision that they thought a restoration of the old logo will be in the best interest of the commission. And when you look at the logo which has just been restored, clearly you can see transparency uh, showing, you can see fairness, you can also see integrity. You see the coat of arms, Ghana's electoral commission. So the consensus was that uh, this will be able to do a better job for us moving forward rather than the one which was introduced by the previous leadership of the commission. We heard you earlier say that the old logo, or the one introduced by Madame Charlotte, say does not represent uh, what the the commission stands for. What do you mean when you say that? N not necessarily that it did not or it does not represent what the commission stands for, but we think this one is a, a better representative of what we do rather than that one, largely because on the face of it, this is easier to explain. When you even uh, look at it as a casual observer, you can clearly see that there is a ballot box which is transparent. There is somebody putting in a ballot paper 
unlike the other one which we are no longer using, many people find it difficult to explain. And we don't think as a commission we want to be uh, talking about explaining this, etc. We think on the face of it, if people can easily explain it, they can easily understand it, that's better. And we are not so much interested in branding per se. We just want to have a commission that is uh, able to accomplish its mandate in terms of what has been specified in the Constitution, build the capacity of our workforce, think about their welfare. Once those things can be done, I think we are very, very much comfortable. It's interesting that you mentioned mandate. Will changing the logo make the EC more efficient? Not, not necessarily so, but to a large extent, the logo, the logo depicts what we do as an organization. I've, I said previously we have transparency, fairness, and integrity embedded in the logo. And those three things are very, very important, plus accountability. As an election management body, you should be thinking in terms of those. And our thinking as a commission is that when our workers see that clearly, you, uh, it's telling you that as a worker, you must be working towards being transparent, being very fair to the players of the game, make sure you are maintaining a high level of integrity, you are accountable, and those things are very clear. It, it, there is no ambiguity. When you look at it, you can easily explain it. So we thought that we needed something that we can easily explain. Our workers will identify with it, they will imbibe. It becomes a form of an organizational culture, a culture of being transparent, being fair, being a person of integrity, accountable. And we believe with that, we, we, we will be more focused uh, accomplishing our mandate rather than something we'll find it difficult, we'll struggle to explain easily to people. And that with the change of your logo, it does not only affect letterheads, uh, as was stated in that memo, that internal memo. You would also would have to pull down branding materials and rebrand your items and, uh, and, and other logistics. How much will it cost Ghanaians? So we have, we have not placed any premium on it, but the reality is that, as I said, we are not so much interested in branding per se. So what we are going to do is that we are going to pull off some of these things, and some of the places will require just painting, uh, following the, 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 the paint which is already there. So those are more the things we are going to be doing. And a number of these items are wallpapers with the logo. So it's just a matter of having a new wallpaper with the new logo. And in many instances, some of the cost is going to be part of the routine administrative expenses. Because when you look at our 2019 budget, there is no line for uh, the replacement of the logo, meaning that it's going to, we are not going to do anything so grandiose, anything we are going to bring the media, etc., to come and hear that we are branding our offices like that. It's going to be very, very parsimonious, something which is very, very simple. So we are not going to be spending so much money Dr. on Dr. that. Sorry, I sorry. said initially the EC is, is a state institution. We are using taxpayers' money. So we want to be sure that anything we are investing our money in, we are getting value for money. Well, you say that you're not interested in doing something uh, grand, but I'm sure a lot of people want to know how much it will cost the taxpayer because over the years we've heard that the EC does not have enough money to even execute its mandate move to other uh, parts of the country and do a lot of things. Next year, there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of activity for the Electoral Commission and also in a build-up to the 2020 elections. And many will argue, why would you spend money on this? Well, this is not the first time we are hearing this. When Madame Charlotte say outdoored the logo, which has now been changed, we were also not told how much that cost us. Listen. Ending. Um, first, it's, it's, there's the logo, and it's ongoing, it's not even finished. We haven't gone doing signage, we haven't done our vehicles, we usually don't even do our vehicles, I'm not sure we intend to. But do you know how much we spent so far? I couldn't tell you. I, we... But those figures are there? Sorry? Are those figures there? Can we find out? Of course they are there. 
I mean, there's a process. And people have to understand that we work within a budget. The EC is independent, but is also subject to laws. So we go through audits. We are audited by the Auditor General, and they go and they look and they make sure we've gone through right process, due process. We've spent within budget. We don't just have um, unlimited funds. And a lot of the reform process going on is also supported by donors, because donors have been working with us and trying to help us ensure that we finish the internal reforms, because we keep putting electoral reforms on top of the same structure. The structure must support the reforms and the things, how you're carrying your mandates. And so there's a lot of donor support for the internal reforms that are going on. So at the time, at least we were not told by Madame Charlotte to say how much it cost to rebrand the Electoral Commission. Dr. Bosman Asari, do we know how much it will cost us? At least the people need to know whether it's very little or so much. I think that people are interested in knowing how much it will cost us. Why, why can't we know? No, as I said, we've only done we've only done letterhead so far, and the letterheads did not cost us more than fifteen thousand. For I I need to get the copies right, but I know it's more than five thousand copies for our, our all our offices, regional districts, etc. And these are part of the routine administrative expenses. If not for the introduction of the new logo, we will still be spending that money, uh, uh, the same amount of money. And the, the areas we may be having some cost will have to do with some of the places we may have to remove the old logo and replace with the new ones. But I was making a point that we are not interested in branding per se. So we are not going to go out of our way to have ceremonies where or we are placing our logo here, etc. Some of them will just be the ordinary paint. So it's not going to be any extra money. And, and I was making the point that in our 2019 budget, we don't have any item, any budget line for replacement of logo. So that means these are not things we are going to spend so much money on. We, it's just going to be the routine administrative expenses, just like having water in the office, having papers, Etc. Sir, sorry. If if you don't have that motive to brand per se, why couldn't we have just allowed this to pass and and maybe the electoral commission will focus on, like some have argued, more pressing issues? Was this necessary at this time? No, we, we thought it was very, very necessary. And you, you wanted to have something which is fairly representative of the work you do, something you can easily own up, something you can easily explain, something even on the face of it, somebody will look at it and, uh, and be able to say that this organization is, to, is into A, B, C, and D. Uh, uh, you are not, you are not uh, the one answering the question. But assuming I ask you, can you explain the EC logo as it used to be? I don't know if you can easily explain it to somebody who, who doesn't understand. But with this new one we have, you can see transparency clearly embedded. You can see integrity. You can also see fairness. You see the coat of arms. You see the ballot box. You see somebody placing the ballot paper, which is easily understandable. So I don't know if you can easily explain the old one to somebody for him to understand, for him or her to understand. And these are the challenges all of us encountered. And we thought that if we had something in place, in our local language, we talk about Sankofa. If the thing is good and it is there, we are not engaging anyone to prepare something new for us. It's not going to be any additional cost to the commission. So the thing was there. We just went back for what belongs to us. Mm. Uh, I'd have you hold on. Dr. Kobi Mensa, a political marketing lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, has joined us by phone and also has something to say about this trending issue. Uh, Dr. Kobi Mensa, what is in a name? Or should I say, what is in a logo? What do you make of this decision uh, of the Electoral Commission to bring back uh, the old logo? All right, thank you for having me. Let me say hi to you know, Bosman you know, for the good job that they are doing. Um, but uh, what is in the name or what is in the logo is confidence, is authenticity. And what is in the name is also a recall. So, you know, if you have a, a logo as an institution, it means that it's a shortcut 
uh, for people to identify, you know, the authenticity of your organization, to mm -hmm. have confidence in it, and also to be able to bring to memory uh, what you do. So logo is one significant, you know, element in the marketing, you know, framework uh, that actually makes us, you know, put some some uh, quality in an organization. I, I don't know if you've seen the Federal Election Commission of the USA's logo. Um, for graphic designers, they would call it quite abstract and it's not as pictorial as what we have reintroduced. Is it really necessary if you're looking at the mandate and function of a body or organization, what the logo does? Of course. I mean, as a marketer, uh, I would say that one of our strong underpinnings for you know, recognition and for authenticating actions in the work is through logo, through branding. So definitely it is important. But let's uh, uh, kind of, uh, with a question that you asked, let's, let's contextualize it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in our system, uh, we mostly deal with emblems. We mostly deal with images. So yeah, it wouldn't be far-fetched for us to see more color, to see more you know, iconic, you know, a branding, you know, from that perspective. Culturally, we're used to that. So you could have other countries who normally use text alone, mm. maybe A, B, C, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in our system, we are very much attached to our cultural symbols. We are very much to, attached mm -hmm. to our colors. And therefore, mm -hmm. uh, you're likely to see difference when you compare us to the other, you know, uh, say, Western countries. Mm. And, and the way things are going... It is possible that we can get another commissioner who may think, well, this logo is not good enough and may have reasons. Because at the time, uh, when Madame Charlotte Say spoke to the media, she firmly believed that that logo, which has now been put aside, represented what the Electoral Commission uh, was, was to do. She even mentioned that they had visited other or visited other electoral commissions and seen what they were doing and they had learned from them, bringing a global perspective, if I may say, to the change of the logo. So what do we do now? New EC, new logo, is that what, what's going yeah, to happen? And, and How do we where, firm up our logo and make sure we don't have these back and forths? And that's where I depart you know, from the EC, both the, the, the one that is on and the current EC. In fact, at a time when Charlotte Jose introduced the new logo, I made it clear that I was opposed to it. And you know, obviously she did it. Obviously we've had a new EC who also thinks that we have to go back to the old logo. I don't have an issue with us going back to the old, but I, I have an issue with the process. Mm -hmm. now, at the time, I requested and I asked, and I'm sure very many you know, marketing expert professors will agree with me. In organization, we're talking about you know, the policy you know, that actually governs logos or governs branding in, in the broader term. What is the lay-down policy when it comes to branding? What is the brand book? What does the brand book say? What does the brand policy say? Now, if you don't have a very broad, you know, or a you know, comprehensive branding policy, you're going to have what we have now. Everybody treats it as a trivial. Charlotte say, for example, didn't think that it was a big deal. Now, the current EC doesn't think that it was a, it's a big deal changing logo. Logo mm -hmm. is not an administrative process. Even an administrative process, we have codified processes. Now, logo is a very I mean, a very important, you know, arm of the entire organization's, you know, uh, reputation. So one can actually dispute an EC's order because they may say that it's not authentic. They don't believe in it because just about a few weeks ago, we had a different, you know, logo. Mm -hmm. And now you have a different logo. So mm -hmm. can you imagine writing a letter to somebody in the, in the U.S., for example, on exactly. an EC's letterhead, and the person is going to say, Oh, I don't believe in this. I don't think this is an organization that we're dealing with. I think you printed it out from the Internet. Now, in the era of fake news, you don't change some of these you know, organizational you know, underpinnings by whim. You've got to make sure that you have a thorough work, and you've got to make sure that all your stakeholders have been informed that these things have changed. Now, if we don't have any government policy you know, regarding our you know, images regarding our branding, we're going to have this back and forth that we have. And I think that is not good enough. I expected that the EC would have actually, you know, kind of embedded this 
in administrative, in a policy wise, and say we have had an extensive policy, a comprehensive policy regarding our branding. And as a result, we're going back to the old, old brand, old mm. logo. And we're hoping that in future, no one can actually just get up and change it. But you just change it because you think it's an administrative mm. process that mm. you can just do that with a, with, with a, with a, with a pen. But it costs us a lot. It doesn't, it may not cost you money, but it costs us reputation. It costs us hugely in terms of reputation because it's sending, you know, information out there that you're not, you're not consistent mm -hmm. and that you're not actually thorough enough in the way you do things. How could you change a logo of an organization just about two years down the line and then hoping that somebody else, not hoping, but anticipating that somebody else, when they take the realms of, uh, of, the, of the realms of EP, are also going to change it. What kind of, you know, kind of a marketing or kind mm -hmm. of a process is this? I just think Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Kobi Mensah is a political marketing lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. And let me take your final words, Dr. Bosman Asari. He is a deputy commissioner at the Electoral Commission. No, I think, yeah, finally, I will say, uh, Ghanaians, I know most people are very excited about it. Yesterday, I was monitoring one of your networks, I think Joy FM, and they mentioned the controversial logo, an indication that the previous one had a lot of issues. We hope this one will be accepted by all. And I also want to use this opportunity to tell Ghanaians that those who still want to transfer their votes to the areas where we are going to have the referendum, where the deadline is tomorrow. Those who also want to do prosy, they have the same opportunity to be able to do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Bosman Osari, Deputy Commissioner at the Electoral Commission. Well, my colleague Nancy Mefatra Dosi has been gathering views of some of you in Accra. It wasn't right for Mrs. Salotose to have changed uh, the former one to the new one which he used. The, the, uh, the whole thing is that the Charlotte Osei logos, we are not happy about it. Actually, we are not happy about Charlotte Osei logo. So once the original one is there, Ghanaians prefer to use that one than the uh, Charlotte Osei one. You see, but as we have the, the, the old one, I like that one. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not envy or I'm hatred of something. But specifically, I like the, the, the old one. Which one is the old one? The Charlotte Osse one or the original one? No, the original one. If you go back to the original and use that one. Well, there you have it. Some people sharing their views.